Hey y'all, it's Sarah and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today's video is going to be my romance books recommendations and TBR. So as a lot of y'all know, I am working on my second book right now. I'm about halfway through writing it. Um, it is a contemporary romance and I've just been so inspired by the genre lately. I've been writing a lot in it. I've been reading a lot in it. I have a lot of things that I want to share with y'all that I've read that I loved and I also want to share with y'all what I do want to read in the future and have on my TBR. Disclaimer, my dog is in the room as per usual and there are people riding dirt bikes out front in our neighborhood so if you hear that, apologies. So I'm going to give y'all a variety of recommendations. They're going to be um, traditionally published, we'll have indie published, we'll have historical, we'll have new adult, we'll have adult, uh, seasonal, all that sort of stuff. But I want to start off with two favorites that really inspired me in my writing journey, and that's Icebreaker and Wildfire. So both of these books are written by Hannah Grace. Icebreaker, I believe, was originally self-published, and now she is published traditionally. And Icebreaker is a hockey romance, and it follows a series of characters out of college. Wildfire is based on one of those players that plays hockey at the college, but it is set at a summer camp. So really interesting like pairing of two books. Third one, Daydream, is coming out this year, I believe. But I loved both of them. They are spicy off the bat. <laughs> so if that is your sort of thing, you will love these. Um, they're a little bit longer than a lot of romances are, which I personally like because I like to hang out with characters for longer. Um, but if you like college sports or you like romance, I think these are perfect. And they're certainly something that expired uh, my writing. Okay, next one is a little bit of a different format, but it's YA and it's actually a set of graphic novels and that is Heartstopper. I've yet to see the adaptation. I still need to watch it. Um, but this is a queer YA graphic novel about two boys who are in high school and just trying to figure out life and living and love and all that sort of stuff. Um, they come highly reviewed by pretty much anyone and everyone. I want to shout these out because people are banning these books a lot lately. Um, I know that people are having trouble getting a hold of them in their public libraries in some places. So I just want to shout these out and say how important I think they are and how excellent they are. Well done. The uh, imagery is beautiful. Like the drawings are really, really good. Um, the art style and all of that. So Heartstopper, I think there's five of them now. I've read the first four and 10 out of 10 recommend. Let's move to an indie favorite and that is The Burns We Carry by Marae Good. This one just got a cover upgrade, which I absolutely love. I think it's really cool. I was able to art read this one and Marae is just a lovely, lovely human. Um, but The Burns We Carry is about a young woman who moves to a mountain town after, um, it, you know, she she's pregnant and she's gone through this really horrible time and she's just trying to figure out her life. She meets this guy who right off the bat, he's a forest ranger. He is just not interested in her being around. <laughs> and um, they have a very interesting connection and um, enemies to lovers, if you will, if you're into that sort of thing, I think you'll really like it. My dog is right in front of me. Hopefully he's not gonna stand on my laptop. Hi, sweetie. Um, <laughs> he, just wants, he just wants his back scratched. She has a full series coming out. Do you need to scratch your ear right now? Yeah, okay. She has a full series coming out with um, the brothers and some side characters and all that sort of stuff. So I'm super excited for the rest of them. Um, but the first one is really, really good. <laughs> I'm go seasonal. And this is a holiday story and it is Faking Christmas. Y'all, this book is so, so good. Um, I don't read a lot of like holiday and seasonal books especially in the winter it's just not my reading vibe um but this one came so highly recommended from a lot of friends and i was like well shoot i have to read it so i read faking christmas it is fake dating it is perfection okay the next one is head over heels which i originally read before i read a lot of romance and I read it because it is based in the sport of gymnastics and as I'm filming this I actually just finished watching a gymnastics meet <laughs> and I um, watch way more often than every four years for the Olympics. I watch all of the major competitions that are streamed in some form. Um, I follow along with the sport pretty closely so I wanted to read it just from the perspective of like someone who loves gymnastics and knows a lot about gymnastics as a fan um, to see kind of like what was going on and 
I thought it was excellently written. It was really fun to read about something that I love. It's exactly why I wrote um, my first book, Victory Gallop. It's the reason why I wrote Equestrian into the stories because it's something I love. So I really enjoyed reading Head Over Heels. I think this is really good because it's not only the the romance aspect but also it talks a little bit about issues that are ongoing in the sport and I think that was really important and uh, you know good that the author included that especially at the time that it was written. Okay next one we're gonna go historical <laughs> and that is Blackmore. Um, Blackmore is a I don't know if it's technically Regency I can't remember exactly what time period it's in um, but it is historical romance and I read it probably four years ago when I was getting right back into reading. I hadn't read in like 10 years. And one of the first people I followed on, on Bookstagram was Lauren at the book script and still a, a dear friend, you know, to this day. Amazing recommendations, by the way, um, and really good photography and content. Anywho, <laughs> she recommended this author. Um, the author also wrote Edenbrook, which I know is a really popular historical romance, but she said in her opinion, she liked Blackmore more. I've read them both both excellent so let's make sure that's clear but I really loved Blackmore and I don't want to say too too much about it but if you are interested in dabbling in historical romance I think it's very approachable um, and it's really really good and the last one for the TBR portion is going to be an indie book that's actually coming out really soon and that book is Say You Mean It by Megan Ranking I had the opportunity to work with her um, in in the preparation for this book and it's just so, so good, <laughs> so heartfelt. Um, I love the setting. It's set up in um, like upper Minnesota by Lake of the Woods in um, a cabin in like an, a lake island setting. And it definitely gives you all those vibes. Two main characters that you really wanna root for. It deals with some tough stuff, um, but just really well written like from a craft perspective, and I can't wait uh, for it to come out. Okay, so now we're moving on to the second portion of the video, which is my TBR. So I've been inspired by all these books I've been reading. I just told you my tippy top favorites. There's a few more that are in the works that aren't out yet or maybe announced um, that I have absolutely loved and can't talk about yet. However, I do have a TBR, I've got it in front of me, and I wanna talk about those really quickly. Please let me know down below which ones are your favorite, which one do I need to read first. If you want to buddy read with me, please leave a comment. Give me a shout. DM me on Instagram. Y'all know the drill. First off with the same author I just talked about, Megan Ryan King. She's also the author of The Ohana Cottage, which I know nothing about other than it's set in Hawaii and it has the most beautiful like poppy co cover. And there's either three or four in that series, but I know they're very well loved on Instagram as an, an indie uh, romance series. And I just want that summer vibe, <laughs> okay? I live in South Georgia, so it's pretty much always warm here. Um, it's mid-February and it's 70 degrees, right? But I want that summer vibe, and I haven't read anything really summery in a hot minute, so Ohana Cottage is definitely at the top of my list. Also mentioned Daydream that I talked about before um, is also in my TBR. That is the third book in the Maple Hills, which is Icebreaker, I almost said ice cream, jeez, Icebreaker, <laughs> that's what I had for lunch, Icebreaker and Wildfire. The next one is Daydream. The cover is mm, beautiful. Um, I don't really know what it's about. I think there's a tutoring situation involved, but that's really all I know. Um, so that one's on the TBR too. Next one going seasonal, at least I believe it's seasonal, is Love Light Farms, which is also in an interconnected standalone series. Um, I believe this started out as indie. It might be traditional now. I know it has like the coolest covers and it's based on a Christmas tree farm, I believe. Other than that, I know nothing, which I'm kind of okay with. I like going into romance books not knowing that much because I like being surprised by the characters and their careers or what they're doing in school and all that sort of stuff. So all I know is Christmas Tree Farm, but this one comes like most highly recommended. So Love Light Farms. I know a lot of y'all have read this. Please tell me in the comments if you have. Next one up is Flawless by Elsie Silver. Um, I haven't read anything by her yet, but these also come highly recommended. I can't. 
I can't remember, I think they're all small town. I'm trying to remember if there's any like cowboy situation or if I'm just totally making that up. Um, but I'm a small town girl. I grew up in a, in a tiny, tiny town. I live now in a tiny, tiny town. And I love small town romance. So uh, this one, I have it on my Kindle <laughs> ready to go. I'm just waiting for a moment in time where I don't have 10,000 arcs to read <laughs> and 10,000 things to write and edit. So <laughs> Flawless is waiting on my Kindle. It's ready for me. Next up is one that I really, really want to get. I've had it on hold at my library for forever and that is the Davenports. And it has this bright, beautiful, poppy yellow cover with the most stunning art on the front of a young woman. It's beautiful. If you've seen the cover of this book, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but it's called The Davenports and it is a historical romance, uh, but it is primarily centering African American characters. And this book won a lot of awards last year. I know personally when I was working at the library, this is a book that we um, recommended to a lot of people and saw a lot of re like reviews and stuff come in about it. Um, and I'm really excited for this one. I'm still on hold at the library for it. I'm, I'm about to just go and buy it. Super excited for The Davenports when I get it. I will read it. The last two are books that I do have <laughs> that I actually just bought. One is The Cheat Sheet, um, which is by Sarah Adams. I feel like this one, everyone and their mother has read except for me. It is, I believe based on the cover, it's an NFL kicker and maybe a ballerina? Is that what she's doing on the cover? I think so, yeah, yes. So, bright green cover, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. But it is a sports romance and I've been told that this is like, a pinnacle of the genre. So as someone writing sports romance, I am absolutely here for it. So uh, that is the cheat sheet. And then the last one that I need to read is The Kingmaker um, by Kennedy Ryan. I want to read so many, so many of her books. Some of them have triggers that I unfortunately don't read. Um, and so this is one that I found that doesn't have the triggers that I don't read and I was able to get it first. Um, so I'm trying to get her other series from the library, um, Say Say You Let Go, Before I Let Go. Y'all know what I'm talking about, the really, really beautiful um, covers. I'm trying to get those. There's a basketball series that she writes that I almost bought the other day at Books A Million, um, and then a friend of mine did mention that it has a trigger that I, I specifically don't read. Um, but I just got The Kingmaker, and all I know is it's like based on a young man who is an oil, son of like an oil tycoon. And there is some environmentalist uh, perspective to it. I believe the female main character is a Native American and I am here to see how this story is done. And I think it's gonna be absolutely beautiful. I've been told this woman can't write anything other than a top top, top, top to your book. So <laughs> I am so excited um, for this one. That's going to be the last book on my list. So again, these were romance favorites paired with a romance TBR. I hope you got some good ideas from this list, some things maybe you hadn't heard of, some things you had, but hopefully I convinced you to read them. Please let me know your thoughts down below and consider subscribing if you haven't already. You can follow me on my social media at the links down below. I also provide editing services to indie authors and I'm an indie author myself. So please check the links down below. Everything that I talked about today will be listed and have a great day y'all. Bye.